Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by the following. By Coca-Cola, serving Alaska quality soft drinks since 1937. By Cook Inlet Region Incorporated, an Alaska Native Corporation promoting economic and social progress for people throughout the state. By the generous support of the Alaska Native Health Board. By the Alaska Commercial Company, Alaska's supplier of food, family apparel, and general Alaskan merchandise since 1867. And by the Public Information Office of the North Slope Borough. There's a heartbeat, loud as thunder, revolution. It's in the air There's a heartbeat Deep inside our mother Are you too cool to care? Welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green, bringing you native news across the north. Thank you so much for joining me. On today's program, we travel to Barrow, Alaska, with news from the Public Information Office of the North Slope Borough. Then, we travel to Old Harbor for an event that happened a few months ago, the high school graduation, but we're putting it on this week. Then over to Seward, Alaska, where our own intern, Marvin Parent, got some video of this second annual sobriety powwow. And speaking of Seward, hello to all the residents of the Wesley Nursing Home. Thank you so much for joining me for another Heartbeat Alaska. And thank you to people and viewers across Canada and Greenland, Alaska, and Pablo, Montana, and out of Window Rock, Arizona, soon to be across the nation. We have all that today, plus much more. But first, here's Gary Fife with Native News Across the Nation. This is Native News Across the Nation. I'm Gary Fife. On Capitol Hill this week, the Senate Indian Affairs Committee has been examining possible amendments to the Federal Indian Gaming Regulatory Act and that's not sitting well with leaders of tribal governments that run high-stakes gaming operations. Members of the National Congress of, the Amer of American Indians and the National Indian Gaming Association voiced their opposition from a joint meeting in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Changes being considered by the Senate committee would increase the presence of federal agencies and give state governments the chance to opt out of gaming compact negotiations, giving the states a veto power. The assembled tribal representatives called this Senate proposal fundamentally flawed in both substance and structure and a loss of tribal sovereignty. The Senate Indian Affairs Committee is now finishing up the public hearings process. A pair of Tlingit young men has been sentenced to solitary bash banishment on an island for the beating and robbery of a Washington pizza delivery driver, but factions within the tribe are disputing the judge's orders. Adrian Guthrie and Simon Roberts have confessed to the crime, and Snohomish County Judge James Allendorfer decided to let a tribal court from the southeast Alaska village of Klawak impose a traditional tribal sentence of banishment on an island as an alternative to prison. Now some members of the village governing body, the Klawak Cooperative Association, have questioned the tribal judge's power to negotiate such a sentence. But so far, Snohomish County Judge Allendorfer hasn't changed his mind. About 80 people joined together on horseback in a celebration of sobriety among the people of the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota this month. It was the fourth annual Crazy Horse Sobriety Ride to honor the legendary Lakota leader and give their youth a visible sign of their dedication to fighting alcohol and drug, drug abuse among their tribe. Indian Country Today reported that the July event honors the memory of Crazy Horse because he was a strong fighter of alcohol use among his people. Along the trail, an honoring ceremony was conducted for the Horse Nation for all the contributions that animal had made to their tribal culture. The Arctic Slope Regional Corporation has been awarded a grant to study the feasibility of constructing a small refinery in northwestern Russia. The Native Corporation is interested in the production of refined petroleum products from the Nenets region above the Arctic Circle. The successful Native Corporation wants to market the fuels to parts of Russia and Northern Europe. 
The ASRC got $300,000 from the U.S. Trade and Development Agency to partially fund the study. And finally, while the 34th Annual World Eskimo Indian Olympics was going on in Fairbanks, Alaska, a group of Siberian natives were visiting their kinfolk on Alaska's St. Lawrence Island in the village of Gamble <coughs> to participate in a smaller version of the traditional games. Siberian Yupiks from New Chaplino and Sereniki have traveled to revive the traditional contest that used to be held every year since 1944, but were interrupted by the tensions of the Cold War between the United States and the former Soviet Union. Games such as wrestling and running test the strength and endurance of the contestants. Gamble villagers used a state grant to bring their Siberian counterparts to, to St. Lawrence Island and the events they called the Siberian Gamble Games. And we'd like to uh, issue a special welcome to SKC TV in Pablo, Montana. It's nice to have you with us. This is Native News Across the Nation. For Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Gary Fife. Thanks, Gary. Don't go away. We'll have more news from Heartbeat Alaska right after these messages. Louder thunder. Sitka Alaska me inugli ikalleong niksok pisua laila tabrasin ikalleaktiv luni allau lugo sumipayak inugalo ako bit ikalle kinermon utiro minaktutin na kaka sa bamon minuakto ng inugalo ako sumilika kipernero ni Gavin ilisimadakrat kanuti payatigon ikayotitigon Kukula Lutin, 800-770-0138. Heartbeat. Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by TCC, a joint venture with Chenega Bay, Tatitlik, and Chugach Alaska Corporation. Through SERVS, ship escort response vessel system, providing tanker escort services in Prince William Sound, protecting our environment, Chugach Alaska Corporation. A longtime contributor to Heartbeat Alaska, the North Slope Borough, once again presents their news, reported by Tina Corwin. <laughs> and the raising of baling arches in the tundra grass marked the realization of a longtime dream for many North Slope residents earlier this month. The festivities symbolized groundbreaking in Barrow for the Cultural Center, a long hoped for and badly needed facility for the preservation and perpetuation of traditional culture on the North Slope. Some 15 years ago, it has been 15 or more years since we made initial plans for the construction of a museum. For our young people living in between two cultures, the Inupiaque and the Western way. It will help them establish a sound sense of identity. The primary missions of the cultural center will be to address needs for preservation of the culture of the North Slope, the passing along of the culture to younger generations, to promote traditional arts and crafts, and to educate visitors and the public about Inupiat culture. I'm glad I'm, I have been able to live this long to take part in this groundbreaking ceremony. And I hope that I'll be able to live so that this building will be no longer mosquito size, <laughs> the way we look at it. Site preparation for the 30,000 square foot center will begin in August. The cultural center will host a museum, storage facilities for artifact collections, and archival materials, a dance group performance area, and traditional arts and crafts workshop. 
the Taze Higby Consortium Library and the offices of the Inupiat History, Language and Culture Commission will move to the Cultural Center. Construction will be complete in the fall of 1996. Members of the Inupiat History, Language and Culture Commission on July 14 visited the site of Pinga Saguruk near Point Franklin, which in prehistoric times was a large Inupiat whaling village. Archaeologists are excavating the site, which has been eroding rapidly in recent years. The project will save valuable artifacts and information, which otherwise would be washed away. The visit gave scientists and elders an opportunity to share ideas about the excavation and its findings. When they arrived, the elders received an orientation to what scientists are finding at the site. Well, you see the spam and the crush here? That's about here in the sand. So you go down this deep and you're into orange, orange and grape crush and spam. Then you go down this deep and you're into the iron hoops from the shipwrecks and glass beads and things like that. And then you go down this deep and you're into prehistoric. No glass, no metal or very little metal and everything made in completely traditional. Watch the next North Slope news segment for an in-depth look at the Pinga Saguruk excavation project. The month of June was a very busy time in Barrow with Nalukutuk celebrations on the 23rd, 24th, 27th, 28th, and 29th. Barrow spring whaling season was successful with a total of 15 landed whales. Nalukutuk celebrations include the sharing of native food by the hosting crew members, singing, blanket toss, and an Eskimo dance to end the evening. Among the food shared is soup, muktuk, frozen whale meat, also known as kwok, Mikagak and frozen fish. John C. Morgan, who became president of BP Exploration Alaska in January, visited Barrow last week to meet government and corporate leaders and to hear local concerns. Morgan emphasized that due to declining production at Prudhoe Bay, increasing efficiency is important to continuing profitability for BP and oil revenues for the state. According to Morgan, that is why BP is strongly in favor of lifting of the oil export ban on Alaska crude. We, one of the problems with that uh, is that it results in us having very high transportation costs, particularly for uh, that part of uh, Alaskan production that we have to take down through Panama to the Gulf Coast. Uh, and if the ban was lifted, it would mean that we could take that oil uh, out to some of the Far East markets uh, at considerably lower transportation costs. So that would help us uh, improve our profitability. Uh, it would help the state uh, through improved taxes and royalties. That's all from the North Slope. For Heartbeat Alaska and the North Slope Borough, I'm Tina Corwin. Kuyunakbuk. Thank you, Tina. Let's travel down to Seward, Alaska for the second annual Sobriety Powwow. Though it was only the second annual sobriety powwow in Seward, the gathering attracted natives from around the state. The beautiful coastal setting is ideal for meeting and celebration, a tradition that began in this setting thousands of years ago. From what I understand, the, the Seward area uh, was a uh, crossroads, a trading area of the native people from the Kenai area, Denai, Denai the Indians, and the Prince William Sound Indians, um, Al Aleuts, Alutics. Um, a friend, uh, one of the native uh, elders in the village of uh, Port Graham, told me one time that when he was a child, his grandfather told him that they used to travel to Seward in uh, Badarki. And uh, he said that the name of the community, and there were some native people that lived there, was Ketukchak which means the big beach. So before there was ever a sword, uh, it was called the big beach, Ketukchak in uh, Sukstun Tang. Seward is already famous for its beautiful setting and its Mount Marathon race, as well as its salmon fishing. Now there is evidence of a history that started long, long ago. I know of 14 different archeological sites that were, were tested in the Seward area where they, they found artifacts. So it, it's just hard to imagine that there wasn't a, a, a group of people that lived in that beautiful harbor. Recently, um, 
uh, one of our tribal people, one of the tribal members was walking along the beach out at low point and her young daughter uh, noticed something in, in, in the water and she told her mother and her mother walked out and picked it up and it was an ulu and it's uh, pretty historical. It, it means quite a bit to us because uh, uh, just walking along the beach and picking up uh, an artifact uh, well it's just more proof that there was native people in, in the Seward area. Okay, you shake the rest. This year's dance groups included the Clinket and Heidi Dancers of Anchorage, as well as the Little Eagles from Aklutna, and the Sleeping Lady Drum Group, as well as the Morning Star Drum Group. The reason for this powwow is to celebrate and encourage sobriety among the native people throughout the world. Included in the celebration was a potluck. Though the powwow committee worked hard to plan the event, they did not expect the hundreds of participants that showed up. The Katukchuk tribe is already well known for their hospitality. How did they manage to feed everyone? Well, some, like Mabel Blatchford, ran home and made extra dishes to bring her famous fish pie. Everyone was fed, making sure they had energy for the big game later that day. <laughs> Let's get me. No Hold on, Francis. Steve, you're on deck. Oh, no hey, right Sorry. Hey, no problem, Ellen. Like many other members of the Katukchak tribe, she had to wear many hats for this event. She was the scorekeeper for both teams, for Katukchak and for the other guys. The other guys were anyone that came down for the powwow to play against the team. She was also coach for the sewer team and umpire for first base. It's that same willingness and can-do attitude that inspired the formation of Katukchuk Tribe, a tribe made up of 500 natives, representing almost every native nation in Alaska and a few from the lower 48. This proves once again a major gathering is possible, feeding hundreds of people is possible, and most importantly, sobriety is possible.
Utok kalini nga inyo kuya naktuk rawal waktok. Utok kanabot aw lakak tut kaw nagini nga si kakanak singman. Ikayutik sa niktut utok kalayot ay mirala siblugit. Ilisi magovit inyong mik pilgoy liramik ikayok tikak tukraramik kakurak lugit mingwak tukvit utok ka nakakavik timim iluak niksang agun sabaktit na kakakula luta 800-770-0138. Fire can turn any room in your house into a death trap. Make sure your family knows two ways out of every room. Plan ahead for fire. This message was brought to you by the Yukon Kuskokwim Health Corporation as part of the National Community Volunteer Fire Safety Project. Thank you so much for giving us the information on the second annual sobriety powwow down in Seward. We really appreciate it here at Heartbeat Alaska. If you have an event or a powwow near you, please give me a call. We'd be happy to put it on our powwow directory. The sobriety powwow that was held down in Seward is very important. In particular to me personally, I lost a friend this past week. She drank too much and did not wake up. To me, this is such a tragedy. My condolences to her family my sympathies to her family. We are losing too many people around the state of Alaska and the lower 48 to alcohol and we will not be conquered. Let's travel now to Old Harbor. It's a couple months old but they had a graduation. Only one high school student graduated because there was only one high school student. This was in Old Harbor Alaska. The one high school student to graduate this year in Old Harbor was named Tony Azuyak Jr. From the junior high there were nine students graduating from eighth grade into ninth. And from the preschool, there were eight graduates. Graduation is always a time to celebrate, especially for the students at Old Harbor School. They put on a play called It's a Small World, and indeed it is. The students recently raised money throughout the year selling donuts and the Old Harbor Native Corporation donated money for a state trip they took through Washington, Oregon, California, Colorado and to the Four Corners Grand Canyon. After the play It's a Small World ended, Old Harbor's eldest senior Larry Matby, who turned 87 on April 10, 1994, received a State of Alaska plaque for his teachings on the Aleutic culture. A fitting ending to the 1994 graduations, celebrating cultures around the world, Mr. Matby is very important to the preservation of the Aleutic history. Thank you so much, Lisa Christensen and everyone else involved in sending me that video from Old Harbor, Alaska. Thank you so much for joining me for another Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green. Please do give me a call if you have any news or events in, in your area. Give me a call and I'll tell you how to get your camcorder to work for us. Thank you once again for joining me. See you next week.
Madonna. 